Hey, uh, one man band. Uh, What's going on? Yo, why do you think the WWE is pushing this backlash at, with the greatest match of all time? Well, I think it's simple. It's because every other every other backlash is the worst match of all time. Show podcast. This twenty four seven Lou and that's Rick Hard. We're thinking of you back last twenty seventeen. <laughs> and that <laughs> one man band, Jinder Mahal. Why did you do that to us? <laughs> As you can see, we are talking about backlash. That's going to be out there for us to enjoy. Enjoy June seventh for us. So. um Let's talk about this this backlash. But by the way, let's go back to the scoreboard before I hit before I hit off on that. Our scoreboard is oh. unweighted scoreboard. Very quickly, uh, Ricardo, do you have it there ready? Unweighted scoreboard. Uh, no matter if it's everyone or just us two, it's two seven. You and me. I'm at seven. You're at two. Oh. Uh, with the weighted oh. scoreboard. With the weighted scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, you, you wish it was the other way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the weighted with the weighted scoreboard, you and me, Lou, are at. Two points apiece draws count uh, in favor of us, and uh, everyone else except for Bogey and Jay Few is at one point. Okay, and Bogey and Jay Few are at zero. And everyone else <laughs> will continue with their zeros because uh, later on introducing their picks for backlash, right? Nothing yes. Else. So unless they pull, unless they pull a Bogey right before in your house, uh, nobody's giving us predictions. Minutes so it'll before just be the show three. starts. They'll give they'll send and, predictions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh right. well. <laughs> oh well. So yeah, so here we go, folks. We're gonna talk about backlash twenty twenty with how you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna start a running count. I've said it two times already, right? Yes, you have said it two times. <laughs> because I, I wanna I want I think we're gonna hear it a hundred times during the during the broadcast. Not their broadcast, our broadcast. But um <laughs> <laughs> but for real, it's going to be the greatest match of all time. So let's start with the predictions here. Let's start off with uh, our possible, we think will be the opener, opening match, will be for the U.S. Championship, the champion uh, Paulo Cruz versus the challenger Andrade. Uh, I'll go first on this one. And um, I'm going to pick up for the winner for this one. I still don't see anything... Uh, with Andrade and trying to get his the, the the championship back, I think that Apollo Cruz wins this one, and uh, they're still giving him his push, and, uh, that, and that's where, that's where it's gonna stay. It's, I don't see anything else going on with Andrade unless a possible breakup with uh, Garza, but that's something for later on. So yeah, my, my pick is that, Apollo that Cruz. Seems, there's a part of me that seems that well. Okay. All right, you're next, your, your pick is Apollo Cruz. Your pick is all right. Your pick is Apollo Cruz. It's in the record books. Yes. Yeah. Um. So there's a part of me that thinks uh, it's they just got rid of Austin Theory from their trio. Yeah. Not counting Zelina Vega there. Uh. But it seems way too quick to just say all right now they're gonna split apart from Adrian, Angel Garza. Um. No, I I don't think that's gonna happen. However. Apollo Cruz has a feel-good story going on. Yes. It's a little too quick to take the championship off of him. I agree with you, Lou. Apollo Cruz with retaining the championship in this match. All right. All right. And in one-man band, what's your prediction? Uh, yeah, I think uh, with with Apollo Cruz winning the belt, I mean, he's he's been on the roster over four years, especially the thing that comes to mind with me with him was JBL in his very first match – when he was when he called up called up to that main roster, that JBL said this guy's got megastar written all over him, and he's completely he was completely floundered after that. Um, now that now that he's finally caught his footing, has a has a championship under his belt, feel good story like Rickard just said. Uh, I really don't think that that it would be smart for them to 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 take the rug out under his feet and have him lose the belt, especially in his first pay per view defense. Yeah. So, so with that, you know, Andrade, Andrade can can take a loss, man. It's it's not going to affect him, especially you know with who's who this girl is. So, you know, I I think he's he'll he'll be fine. So I think Apollo Cruz c- continues to riding the wave. He's he needs it, and and I, I think I think he'll he's going to continue on for a little bit more. 
All right. Okay. So we all we all three agree that uh, the winner of uh, the greatest match of all time, oh sorry, possible greatest match of all time, five, uh, will <laughs> be Apollo Cruz uh, oh, defeating Andrade. All right. So there we are. Yeah. So okay, let's go to the next match, which could possibly be the greatest match of all time, six. Would you stop? No. <laughs> no, we are not what? doing this. What? There are six more matches. We what? are not doing this. What am I doing? What am I saying? What? Uh, what am I saying about the greatest match of all time? Uh, uh, quit saying the pay-per-view tagline. Seven? <laughs> Seven. Seven. No. All right, what's the next match? The next match, possibly. Uh, it's going to be the defending champions, Bailey and Sasha Banks. For the uh, for the, the women's uh, tag team championship against Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, and the Iconics, Bailey K and Peyton Royce for a triple threat match. So triple I threat tag team match. Yeah. Yes. So uh, Rick Hardy, you go first. All right. So um, one man band mentioned this before the the show. He thinks this might be the least predictable match. On the card, ironically, it's the only non-singles match. Oh wait, uh, well, yeah. non. Yeah, I, I get you. I, I get what he's saying. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't agree with that statement. However, I do feel that this match is going to have a surprise win. Um, look, so I said it before. Backlash does not have a good history uh, as a pay-per-view as of late. Uh, 2018, 2017 are considered uh, some of the worst on the list. And 2019 isn't even on the list of best. Uh, so it's just middle of the road. If they want to make a memorable moment, I say give it to my girls in a surprise win. Ironically, the only tag team in this match who aren't two-time champions... And they're gonna be, uh, you know who they are. The, uh, the the come from the land down under. Give it to Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, the Iconics. Cause you know why? Betting against them, you gotta be joking me. <laughs> I can't pull off. I can't pull off the accent, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay. Uh, history repeats itself. Sasha Banks yeah. and barely have a underwhelming title reign. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you went with the Iconics, okay, and one-man band. Who do you predict to win this possible greatest match of all time? Ah, uh, I got to say something, man. I think I think with what I said that this is the least predictable one, I still stand by that. But it came to mind, you know, WrestleMania 35 did come to mind. And, you know, with the apparent, alleged uh, backlash <laughs> No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> with the alleged backlash that happened after they lost the belts to the Iconics, I, amazingly enough, you know, the, you know, Sasha t- took her ball and went home, and Bailey had to take the brunt of it, and she she carried it. I something tells me that now that Rickard said that, you know, I hate that I, I hate to steal his pick, but I have a feeling that he's probably onto something. I I think because here's what I think is going to happen. I think because of the fact that, that that Bailey and Sasha, well, specifically Sasha, caused so much trouble after WrestleMania 35, yeah. I think I, I know somebody in the back is upset and, and probably said, okay, we'll give them the belts, but when the time comes, we're taking it right back from them. And I think that they're going to they're gonna put a double sting on them and the Iconics are going to win. They're going to get the belts from them. They're going to lose it to them again. And then I think that is what's going to cause it to where Bailey and Sasha are going to have their dissension. And then they're going to separate eventually. So I'm going to go with the Iconics as well. All right. Two for the Iconics there. Yeah. For the possible one of the greatest matches of all time. So nine. I did not. I did not bring that up. I'm glad he brought it up. Yes. I do think this is going to lead to Sasha and Bailey uh, split. Yeah. And, uh, It'll go. It'll go to a championship match between them. All right. Yeah. So my my prediction for this one, this one, this one, this is gonna be a good one. Um, Sasha and uh, Bailey. Yes, I do think that there will be a breakup there at some point. We're all waiting for it. Like we're so. I think we're like we're still waiting for Cena to turn heel. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like they've been teasing us for the longest. We don't know what's going to happen or not. But we think it's going to happen, right? I guess, right? We can wait for it, right? All right, and then we have Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I like that, that, that matchup there, but I wonder how long they're going to stick together or are they going to split them up? Because they've been together for a while already, and I think that Raw needs because they're 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 part of Raw. Raw needs another 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 good superstar to face against the champion, and with uh, Charlotte Flair being uh, back now again to to Raw, I think it'll be exciting to see what they do with Alexa Bliss as her character goes. So I think they might they might split them up as well, which you guys haven't mentioned. So that leads us to the winners of the possible. Greatest match of all time, 10. Uh, the Iconics will win this one. Uh, so there we go. Uh, all right. We're all in agreement. That was unexpected. I, I didn't expect that either. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there we are. We're, we're in agreement. Okay, next match. All right. Yeah, we're in agreement. You all stole my pick. No. Uh, hey, I, I admit it. I admit it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, one person admitted it. There you go. He looked at my notes. Lou, Lou, Lou did the. Lou did the. Um, he he sent Vince a friend request and got no response. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Paul's not helping me out now because he's not even. He's not even in there with the other Paul. So yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I have problems where they're going on there. Okay. So everyone, next match, we're gonna have Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus. So they've been building this match up up on uh, on uh, SmackDown even before Jeff Hardy came back. With, uh, yeah, with car Sheamus. crashes. Yeah, with, well, well, even before that, where he was like, "Yeah, where's Hardy? Where's Hardy? I've been watching. Where's he? You guys always talking about Hardy. What about you know? What about me?" Uh, Sheamus was doing all that, so making all that noise. So yeah, we have that match coming up, and our first prediction to call it will be one man band. Who do you think will win this? Uh, I'm looking at this one, and something tells me that I think I think Jeff Hardy's gonna win it. I think he's gonna go over. Um. And I say this because I, I Jeff Hardy has has been getting a push of sorts. You know, he's I, I know Vince likes him, so you know it, because and I think because of that he gets opportunity after opportunity, which even though it's not a, a world title run, he he seems to always be in the picture somewhere or another. So I think I think what's what'll happen is he. He will he'll win this and then he'll he'll be up for the IC belt okay. and okay. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I have a feeling I have a feeling that he's gonna be IC title bound after this so yeah I, I say Jeff Hardy Jeff Hardy's gonna take it okay all right so Jeff Hardy there now my turn to pick this one uh, between Jeff Hardy and Sheamus I like what they've been doing with Sheamus uh, being a, a heel strong heel defeating everyone in front of him even if, even if they put him into jobbers in front of him. Before we finally got to, to 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 go against Jeff uh, Jeff Hardy, um, yeah, I, I but still I don't think they're 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 going to push him all the way that far yet. So I think that Jeff Hardy because only because his brother is Matt is on AEW and just to, sh to show them the other Hardy, I think mm -hmm. Vince is just trying to be a little bit of a spiteful and this and leave uh, Jeff Hardy to keep on uh, to win this one. And like I I agree with you on this one. I'm going to copy this one from you. I do. I, I do think that with uh, with AJ winning the Intercontinental, I think he'll go after AJ for that one. Yeah. But yeah, my pick is Jeff Hardy. And and Rick Hard, <laughs> who do you pick? I I I like that you mentioned Matt Hardy being on AEW because I was going to make a joke about that. And I've made this I made this point a while back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. When Vince when Vince hears about the Hardy the Hardys right mm -hmm. as single competitors, this is what happens. He's in his office and. A couple months back when Matt Hardy uh, returned from injury, he got a call. His assistant goes, Mr. McMahon, uh, one of the Hardy boys is here to see you. And Vince goes ecstatically, Jeff? And he says, no, it's the other one. No. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh. He says, who? He says, who? And then they say, uh, Matt Hardy? And he says, oh, oh that guy. Uh, just put him in Lucha House Party <laughs> under a mask. Oh. <laughs> right. So... I, I'm glad that you mentioned that Matt Hardy recently left for AEW, so maybe there's going to be punishment to Jeff Hardy for this. Um, punishment. As someone, as someone, as someone who who feels like he he understands the mind of Vince McMahon, I for for reasons unforetold, <laughs> I think Vince McMahon it hasn't even tracked in his mind that Matt Hardy's on AEW. 
<laughs> he, he honestly, he's honestly like, he's honestly like, all right, Jeff. So we're gonna get you in this program with Sheamus. You're gonna beat Sheamus because he's Paul's friend, and <laughs> I don't care about Paul and his workout buddies. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna beat Sheamus, and you're gonna get in a title match with AJ Styles for the Intercontinental Title. And you know, we'll we'll see how that plays out. You know, stay away from stay away from all your all your recreational habits. <laughs> um, and he doesn't even and, and Jeff's probably saying like oh aren't you like upset that my brother went to the other show he's like who's your brother oh. <laughs> uh, but long story short I think I think uh, I think I'm going to agree with you guys uh, Jeff Hardy he's getting the W on uh, on this match with Sheamus Wow, uh, only another because, one. Only Three. because, yeah, he's got he's got the redemption arc going. I'm gonna say Jeff Hardy gets the win over Sheamus. Okay, so that's three of us agreeing. Three of us agreeing yeah. again on a third match. Wow, wow. I mean, yeah, this event. Uh, one of us said before the show, this event seemed pretty predictable. It seems it seems to be that way. Yeah. All right, so here we go. For so so all three of us predicted that what could possibly be one of the greatest match of all time, Jeff Hardy oh. defeat Sheamus eleven. So there. So let's go to the next one. Number four. Now we have the Raw Women's Championship. We have, for a possible greatest match of all time, 12. No! <laughs> Asuka, the champion versus Nia Jax. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, I go first on this one. So, all right. So let me pick on this one. Um, I don't see anything on going on with Nia Jax just doing her role as a heel, even after she's been hurting other people out there, as we've heard, uh, we haven't seen it on TV, but we've heard other stuff going on backstage, where she's been hurting other people. I don't think she gets, any, I don't think she wins the championship at this time, and I just still think that Asuka retains. So that's my pick, Asuka. Asuka retains. And okay. Ri and Ricard, who do you pick? All right, I'm gonna keep this one shorter. Um, <laughs> I was short. Then my last, then my last prediction. Uh, it's Oscar versus Nia Jax, and if Nia Jax didn't get the win last time around, uh, she's not getting the win in this rematch. Uh, Oscar retains clean, no shenanigans, yeah. and then unfortunately gets put in a program with Charlotte Flair, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yep. But on the plus side, Oscar versus Charlotte Flair could be potentially the greatest match of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> One minute, man, what's your pick? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, this is this is this is such a such a predictable pay per view, in my opinion. Um, listen, Nia Jax to me has negative a hundred percent chance. <laughs> I'm serious, negative a hundred percent chance of winning anything with with everything that's been going on with her. Not only all the people that she's hurt. But also that little blunder that she made the other week talking about, oh, me Japanese, me, 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 like that. Like, that right there was a little, you know, I I joke around all the time. But, you know, that was a little a little rough right there on the edges, you know. You had that blunder, and then not too long ago with Jerry Lawler talking about the ramen noodle sent on with Sozao. You know, that, you know, you got to be careful with these days, you know. It's not, this is not the attitude era anymore. And, uh, you know, Nia Jax really messed up on that one. So I have a feeling that not only is Asuka going to win, but I have a feeling that Asuka's probably going to layer out. Like, you know, especially because, you know, she heard Carrie saying she heard her home girl. You know, I have a feeling that Asuka's probably going to lay it on her like she did at NXT when, like years ago when she, when they competed. Hmm. And, and, and she just going to kick her in the head. Like, <laughs> like I really think so. I really think it's going to happen. So... All right. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right, so, okay, again, fourth. We're all in agreement. Olympic, in agreement. Yeah. All right, next match. Okay, this is going to be a, a handicap match. It's going to be for the the WWE Championship, right? That's the one? I was I was going to confuse yeah. the championship. Yeah, it's actually, no, it's actually the Universal title. So, oh, Universal one. Okay, Universal title. I was getting confused. Okay, it's going to be defending champion Braun Strowman versus The Miz and John Morrison for a possibly the greatest match of all time. Twelve. I can't. Say, by the way, I gotta say, I gotta add this. Whenever they, they they mention that and they put that match, I'm like, yeah, right. Come on. 
<laughs> why, why is this? Why is that tagline being used on this picture? Wrong picture. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so in this one, uh, Rick Card, you go first. Yeah. So I, I, I I've kind of joked about this before we started recording, but uh, Andrew, hold that thought about this being the most predictable show because I'm about to hit a swerve like you have no idea. Oh Lord, here we go. So as we all know, Braun Strowman was. He had his first championship, singles champ, championship, uh, a couple months back as Intercontinental Champion. Yep. And in order to preserve his aura, he was put in a handicap title defense versus Shinsuke Nakamura, mm -hmm. Cesaro, yep. and Sami Zayn. Mm -hmm. Three-on-one handicap match, and they used it as a means to get Sami Zayn to take the title off of him. I am not going to go out on a limb and say Braun Strowman wins this match. You know why? Because, number one, Miz is my boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's one of my boys. You know, you don't go against your boys. But also, he's actually been consistently a good, uh, a good uh, face for the promotion. He's only had one previous championship reign uh, in the main event title uh, as former WWE champion back in 2011. Yeah. And he's, he's done a lot to redeem himself with the company. He's done, he's, he's, he's kept his head in the game. He's done a lot of good stuff and it's, it's late because it, I feel like they should have pulled the trigger on this back in, uh, 2017, 2016, yeah. that time. Yeah. But I think it's time to see not only the Miz, but, uh, Morrison probably, either one of them be uh, champion or co-champion, however they decide to go about yeah, it. Yeah, because they're co-champion, right? I, I think they're going to go with whoever gets the pin over Strowman, but I don't know. Ultimately, I'm still going to say Miz and Morrison win it. Ooh, and very somewhere, bold. And, uh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going out on a limb on this one, but the feeling that I get is this will be – this will be the, the setup so that we can later go on to a possible split between Miz and Morrison and probably a cash-in because I don't see Otis cashing in on Braun Strowman. That's, that's the only reason I'm going to mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. plus, plus, Braun Strowman has basically demolished Miz and Morrison throughout the entire buildup of this match. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, I feel like they're, they're setting us up for a swerve here. Uh, that's just me. Oh, no. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say Miz and Morrison. I'm going to say Miz and Morrison right. with the win. Okay. And I, I don't think that you guys had this in your notes, so I'm, I'm going to be interested to see who, who agrees with me on this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, go ahead. All right. Uh, one man band. Who do you have? Uh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Before, yeah, you said, before, you, before you said, let, let me fix my prediction here. Okay. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I mean, wow. That that you know, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that at all, and that that's actually really really intriguing. And and I I like I said before with the AEW predictions, if that were to happen, I wouldn't even be mad. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I I I, I like the Miz. I I. I'll put it like this. If it would have been the Miz versus Braun Strowman, I think I would have been all right with with the Miz taking it. And, and I'm, I'm with you, actually, uh, Rickard. They should have pulled the trigger on the Miz for the title back in, I think it was that program, when, when Daniel Bryan was... Was, was GM, yes. No, no when da actually not even... I say when, when Daniel Bryan was the eco-champion, the, the environmental champion. Oh. Yeah, because in my opinion... My opinion, I know I'm veering off a little bit, but in my opinion, when Kofi Kingston was on his meteoric rise to end up, I feel like they should have they should have slotted the Miz in, and it would have been a perfect heel versus face, and it would have been the Miz going over, and you know, but 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 Kofi Kingston winning made sense. I I, I liked it, so I'm not even I'm not even gonna argue that. But with him and Morrison. I like both of them. I think they're great, but I just don't see it. I just don't see. I just don't see uh, Braun Strowman losing the belt here. Um, 
I don't think it's going to be a long reign. I, I think Braun is going to lose it real soon. But I don't think it's going to be Sunday. So so I, I think I think Braun is going to keep it just for a little bit more. So you're saying on I have a Sunday, a but not this Sunday. Yeah, yeah, on a Sunday, but not this Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you know. I like it. All right. Wow. Wow. Okay, so there you go. You picked uh, Braun Strowman to win it. Yeah. All right, so we broke the... the the consistency we had there. So now my turn for the pick. Now I listened to Rick Card and I was just about to erase my pick, but then, oh God, I forgot to add one more factor in there. If <laughs> Otis is a face, he needs a heel. I mean, he needs, but you know how they set it up, right? It's always that setup. You know, I, I, I've, I've mentioned, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show, but I hate that whole face heel setup. It should just be like, you are what you are, and you fight whoever you've got to fight to win a championship. But anyway, mm-hmm. so. And if he needs a heel, then yeah, it would make sense for him to face either if they give it to only one of the one of the two champions to face it or face against them, and then he'll, then he'll cash you know to to cash in the championship to win it. But but I have to say one thing: the winner of this match will be Braun Strowman. I don't see him. I don't see uh, Miz and Morrison winning this one. I think Braun Strowman wins it, and yeah, Braun Strowman wins it. And I don't know, maybe a possible cashing in of a money in the bank. But it's too. But it's too yeah, late. I was I, I was gonna say that, but I don't think to, I don't think they'll go with the to make to make this pay per view a good one. No, not at a backlash. Now, if they wanted to do that, the reason why I'm going Miz and Morrison is if you want to eliminate the possibility of co champions here, you would have Miz and Morrison win it. And if you really wanted to do a cash-in then and there on a throwaway pay-per-view, Braun Strowman goes berserk, lays them both out, lays them both out, multiple, I'm talking multiple running power slants, mm-hmm. and he walks to the back. They're both on the, on, on the mat, and then you just see, you just hear Otis's heavy machinery music hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He runs out there. He runs out there. He's like, I'm cashing in, I'm cashing in. Miz and Morrison are both laid on the mat. Nobody's moving. And the referee, and I know they try to do it now where they have to get back to their feet, but basically I would have, you just have the ref ring the bell. And you just have Otis do the, do the caterpillar, mm-hmm. double elbow drop him, and he gets a pin on both of them by laying on top of them. If, if I was doing a cash in on this throw at Pippery, which I don't think they're going to do. Okay. I don't think they're going to do, but that's the scene I have in mind. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm still gonna stick with Miz and Morrison, um, and this is gonna be my my point my point breaker. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, I'm Woman breaking Bat- the lead. I'm breaking the lead. One man, Ben and I agree with uh, Braun Strowman, and with a bold pick, uh, Ricard with uh, with uh, Miz and Morrison for possibly the greatest match of all time. Fourteen. Uh, <laughs> just, right. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, oh, everything's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next match we have. Uh, it's going to be Drew McIntyre, versus the champion, versus Bobby Lashley. So uh, this one will be uh, One Man Band goes first. Uh, all right, so we've got Bobby Lashley, who's been, you know, in this little co- co- relationship with, with Lana, um, now him and Lana have seemed to have been, you know, strained. MVP's in the story now. MVP's been building him up, and you know, Bobby Lashley has changed, and now he's on the he's wearing the long trunks now. Um, and and you got Drew McIntyre, who's been. I, I I wish I wish there was a crowd to to see Drew McIntyre with this title run because I think Drew McIntyre is phenomenal. Uh, I love his. I love his his attitude. I love the way that he's been, you know, being portrayed, especially when he beat Seth Rollins at the last pay per view, and when he beat him, he got up to his face and said, "If you're a leader like you say you are, you'll shake my hands." <laughs> and yeah, I love that. Like I, it's like I kick, I beat you. That's it. Let's deal with it. Let Let's move on. And I I really like what he's been doing. Um, and I think. I think they got to keep the train running with, with Drew McIntyre. Got to keep it running with him. He's he's um 
He's been a great champion despite everything that's been going on. Um, he, you know, he the poor the poor guy. You know, I I don't think he ever expected to win the belt under these circumstances. You know, but but you know, keep it running with him. The guy deserves it. Uh, I like Bobby Lashley, but I think Bobby Lashley's time has pretty well passed. I don't see Bobby Lashley holding the WWE title. You know, I think it's done. So so let give it to Drew McIntyre. I say Drew wins. He moves on. Claymore Claymore kicks the competition <laughs> and moves on. Moves to the next to the next challenge. All right. So you you have uh, Drew McIntyre winning uh, retaining yeah. the championship. All right. Yeah. All right. Sir. My turn. My turn to pick here. I'm gonna pick. Uh, make this one nice and sweet. Nice and short and sweet. The champion will be Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre will win this one. I agree with you, uh, One Man Band. Yeah, I don't see anything yet with Bobby Lashley. And also, you guys follow Impact. Wasn't this ever an Impact Championship match uh, one time? Yes. Yes, it was. Who won that uh, one? Uh, I believe it was Bobby Lashley. Oh, wow. And who, I believe it was. Who's the champion at the moment? Uh, I think Eddie Edwards. Oh, oh. No, but I believe it was Eddie Oh, okay, okay. No, no, but I, I thought they had, they had they did have a championship match. Uh, Drew uh, Gallo versus Bobby Lashley. Drew, Drew, Drew Galloway. Uh, I, I, I don't remember Galloway. if they had. I don't remember if they had the belt at the at, or if one of them had the belt at the time. Okay. But but because I do remember that Eddie Edwards and, and Bobby Lashley were going back and forth for quite a while, okay. and then Drew Galloway slotted. I know Drew Galloway won the Impact title, and he also won the Grand Championship, which I know is not defunct. But. Uh, I think I, you know what? I think maybe Drew Galloway had the the, the grand championship, and I think Bobby Lashley might have beat him for it. Ooh. I'd have to check. Yeah, I think. I think. But yeah, I'd but, have to check. but I think under, under these circumstances, yeah, like you were mentioning, I, I don't think that uh, Lashley wins it yet, or at this time, yeah, or yeah. this paper. Uh, yeah, but, I don't think so. Either. So I, I think Drew uh, McIntyre retains. And uh, one man, uh, sorry, Rick Card, who do you have? Ha! <sighs> so. All I'm going to say is talk less, play more. <laughs> All right. Uh, Drew McIntyre is one of my boys. Yep. He's doing a phenomenal job as champion. I, I love – he's on a roll. Uh, it, was a, it was a shame that he won the championship to the sound of deafening silence. Yeah. Yeah. At WrestleMania 36. However, I will say this. Something not being talked about is how Bobby Lashley will probably lose and what will be the fallout afterwards. I think that not only will Bobby Lashley lose, but you're going to see his two managers, MVP and uh, Lana, have a bit of an argument and a scuffle outside the ring, and it's going to lead to a feud that could possibly lead to the greatest wrestling match of all time <laughs> between, <laughs> between, between Lana and MVP. Which will see Lana emerge victorious. <laughs> For some reason. All For right. some reason. All right. <laughs> but as far as the match we're, we're discussing at hand, uh, Drew McIntyre retaining nice and sweet. And, uh, yeah, let's keep, the, let's keep the Claymore train rolling. All right. There we are. Okay. So we all agreed on this one. All right. So next match. It's going to be four. The greatest match of all time before it happened. I don't know why they're calling it that. It's going to be Edge versus Randy Orton. It's going to be part two of what we have, I guess, from when we saw at WrestleMania. Of day, was it day, that was day two, right? Of WrestleMania? I think it was day two. Uh, yeah, day two. So, yeah, that, so we're going to have a, a, a matchup again of this for portions. And that's, wait, we're now, hold on, hold on, hold on, Lou. Hold on, Lou. It's a wrestling match. The tagline, the. the the actual tagline is the greatest wrestling match of all time. Sorry, greatest the the greatest argument remember the years. argument Orton used to to get this match going was Edge beat me in a fight where weapons and everything else is involved. You have to beat me in a wrestling match with rules 18. and with wrestling moves. So that's the that's the set <laughs> that's the setup. Um, and yeah, I. Uh, it's it's right, basically so a, a, a right, shot right. at Dave Meltzer who, who complained about how long the Edge and Randy Orton match was. Wow, at okay, okay, okay. wow, amazing how one guy can affect the uh, industry like that. So yeah, I'm gonna pick yeah because they mentioned him as well on AEW. 
Um, so, yeah, I'm going to pick the winner of this one's going to be Edge. He's going to win the greatest match of all time, 17. So, yeah, that's my prediction. I don't have much of a story to tell you why I think he's going to win it. I just think he's going to win it because, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not too uh, – this storyline has been dragging for a while. I like all the intensity of it, but it's like, what? So, yeah, I'm, I'm lost on that, on that storyline. So, Ricardo, you go, you go next. Okay. So, uh, you had Edge get a win over Randy Orton and was this that, – that feud was built upon Edge having his return match. Uh, Orton had done terrible things going up to it. Edge had to win that match because the alternative was Randy Orton ends his career, basically. So, going into this match, the only real buildup is Randy Orton versus Edge. Uh, now, fun fact, if I'm not mistaken, Randy Orton is completely 100%, has never scored a one-on-one -on -one win over Edge in history, right? Mm. So every time they fought each other one-on-one, -on -one, Orton has, has come up short. And I think this is the one where Orton gets his win back, mainly because what, what happens if Edge loses a wrestling match? after he already got the win at WrestleMania. It's a throwaway pay-per-view so that Orton can get the win. And most likely, since there are disqualifications in this match, most likely, you'll see Edge's next rival make the appearance to, uh, to cost Edge the match, Ooh. whoever it is, and then lead away from this. Also, so that if Braun Strowman were to retain in the main event, he's got a he's got a rival in Randy Orton. Wait, if Braun Strowman, so I'm, I'm, the different yeah, shows. I don't, eh, wild card rule is kind of in effect again. So. Oh, I'm just telling you the different shows. Just saying. Either way, well, McIntyre's got a, a rival then, if that's the case. Oh, okay. Because, there you go. Yeah, and that fits and that fits perfectly with my predictions. Yeah, McIntyre's got a rival in Edge and Randy Orton, not Edge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, uh, Randy Orton. So Randy Orton. Is? After uh, my pick is Randy Orton. Randy Orton gets the Ooh, win over Edge okay. in the greatest wrestling match of all time. Eighteen. It won't be. It won't be. By the way, it won't be. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, one man band. Who do you have? So for the greatest wrestling match of all time. Um, Nineteen. Nineteen. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, which I think is an insult, right. or you know, th this is this is you know, I, I've been watching wrestling since 1989, and I can tell you, I can name at least 20 matches right off the top of my head that that would that can take this title. But you know, since this has the greatest wrestling match of all time title, yeah, 20. 20. <laughs> I wanted to get that 20. Um, I, you know, look. I, I I love Edge. I, I think Randy Orton's great. I know Tommaso Ciampa uh, he threw threw a, a nice little shade bomb at him, which was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you guys heard it, but if you guys have not heard it, yeah, he basically he basically made made fun of Randy Orton, saying, "Hey, my daughter was having trouble sleeping recently. Up until I, I started showing her matches, it works better than Nyquil." And I, I thought that was wonderful, wonderful. But whatever. Um, I look at it as I think Edge. I think Edge is is, is probably due to to you know go back and rest for a little bit. You know he's I know he's he's uh, nursing nursing a, a surgery that that's very delicate. Um, he looks phenomenal for his age. I mean he's forty seven years old and looks. Better than me that I'm 35, you know. Um, I think I, I think like you guys said, I think Randy Orton takes it. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think he takes it. You know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm pretty sure Lou went with Edge. I went with well, Edge. okay. I went with Edge. Okay, I went so, with Edge. So in this case, Rick Harden. So yeah, there you go. There you there go. go. So in this case, um, I'm making a that's right, you are. You are. I mean, it's it's the wrong one, but but that's fine. Uh, in, all, no, no, no. in all fairness, Lou. In all fairness, Lou, he's doing this so that he 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 differentiates himself from you, and uh, scores the win. 
because otherwise he'd be agreeing with you throughout the entire show. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Funny. But, but, but no, honestly, though, I mean, it, it, it doesn't make any sense, as much as I hate to say this, it doesn't make any sense for Edge to win this. He's already, he won the WrestleMania one. Um, you know, the actual technical wrestling match, I, I will honestly believe that Randy Orton will not only win this, but then he will start dubbing himself the greatest wrestler of all time. Oh, and wow. Oh, God. No. I, I really believe, wow, you know. Wow, that's he, pretty, bo- I like that. That's not bold. I like I, that. I, you know, Randy Orton, Randy Orton could absolutely pull that off. Yeah. I mean, you guys, have, you guys have seen him on Twitter and, and Instagram, how he acts. I mean, he doesn't care. So I truly believe, like, he has the legend killer under his belt. He has, you know, just the Viper. I mean, he's got so many monikers, and he's, he's, he's shifted so many times. I think this will, will be his next moniker. He will be dubbing himself the greatest wrestler of all time. And he's going to annoy the crap out of people with it. Oh, and he's gonna oh, he's gonna say he's gonna say he's gonna say I beat Edge, and and you know he can't handle me in a, in a wrestling standpoint because I'm the greatest wrestler of all time, and there ain't a damn thing that anybody any one of you can do about it. And and that's where I think it'll start setting up for other people. I, I do I do believe that Drew McIntyre might be might be his next lead up because I think it makes sense. Um. But we'll go from there. But I think, yeah, I, I, I think uh, Randy Orton takes it. All right. Okay. So there we are. Those are our picks for um, Backlash 2020 for the greatest match of all time, 21. So I have one uh, last question, by the way. Guys. Yeah, there's no need for a last question. I actually have one final comment. Oh, really? On, uh, on what I think will happen at the greatest wrestling match of all time. 22. <laughs> So you're going to have Edge in the ring. Okay. And maybe Orton's in the ring. He doesn't have to be. But essentially, they're about to start the match. Because this is, this is uh, you know, if Randy Orton's going to go, if we're going to go with the troll job, let's, let's, let's go 100% on it. And you basically have the bell ring. They're about to lock up. And then you just hear theme music hit for Edge's future rival. Edge is going to look towards the ramp, wondering what the heck's going on. Orton's going to RKO him. One, two, three. Greatest wrestling match of all time also happens to be one of the shortest ones of all time. (laughs) 